launched a new vid, day in the life of a billionaire. I was working 20, 22 hours a day. I was falling asleep on the desk and then waking up and keep working. What's a health advocate? And how much does one of these cost? Seven to ten million dollars. And what made you decide to get two rather than just one? It, it just happened. How long do you want to live to be? I will live to one point. Man, that's the oh. f off. Yeah, you broke. It's like fucking everybody fucking wanted to talk about money. And this is like the last thing that I want to talk about. I almost come as like two years ago. The outer wealth, it doesn't give you happiness. It you up. I want to be a billionaire. So. Billionaire. 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 Fuck yeah, I'm a billionaire. America now has more billionaires than at any time in history. While most Americans are struggling to make ends meet, should we abolish billionaires? These notes were left on more than a dozen luxury vehicles along. I feel like I hate rich people because like they obviously have no f nothing going on for themselves. Bro, how can you be mad at a that makes money? Point Grey Road and the tires were deflated. Subscribe for more Eat the now Rich content. Come find us, come grab a popsicle, eat the rich with us. Eat the rich! Eat the rich? Eat the rich! What in the f***? Eat the rich! Oh, we got the eat cops the coming rich. right now. In recent like years, billionaire has become a pejorative. It's a, yeah. like it's like that's a bad thing. Are you going to become a billionaire one day? I would say almost certainly, but that's not the goal. What does being a billionaire mean to you? Billionaire to me is having access to enough resources to actually make an impact on planet Earth. This is Jarek Tadla, and he's a billionaire that made his fortune in real estate. A first-generation Polish immigrant, he moved to America when he was 21 years old, and he got to work. Making money as a dishwasher and selling cars on the side, he scraped together enough money to buy his first property. As an immigrant who struggled to find housing himself, he realized that there was a hole in the market, so he began to build his real estate portfolio around serving the immigrant population. He grew quickly, and eventually That's he was smart. able to scale into buying entire apartment complexes. And fast forward 30 years later, Later, some might say this was a guy that had it all. The private jets, the mansions, the fancy cars, and the status of being a very wealthy man. But it was at this point where he felt the most miserable and actually considered taking his own life. After fierce internal battle, he came to the conclusion that inner wealth was much more important than any number in the bank or anything you could buy. And he decided to start speaking to an issue that many men feel in their life, the feeling that they are not enough. In this episode, we explore what a day in the life of a real estate billionaire is like, and we jump into the world of Yark Tadla. Let's begin. Let's go, baby. If you want a little bit of that razzle dazzle, you want a little bit of that caffeinated Mike Tyson punch to the mouth, I pop one of these things and I feel like an ACDC soundtrack is guiding my nicotine like sometimes you just want to pop it in there and let it do its magic this is a product i use i love my crew had to ask for a refill because that's how many we use and the sour cherry flavor really does it for me zero sugar zero calories just a caffeine punch that'll get you going this makes you feel like goddamn hulk hogan this will make you jump out of your seat and do jumping jacks okay What's important to me is putting clean energy into my body. Something that makes you feel good. Use code Tommy G for 20% off your I was just first order and try them out. Link is in the description. And now for the rest of the video. Today, we're diving into the life of a billionaire. A lot of questions come to mind. What does a day in the life of a billionaire look like? A lot of us might have some preconceived notions. I mean, depending on who you are, you either might really look up to a billionaire, want to aspire to be one, or you hate them. Why are all them bald? I mean, you think they're, they're inherently evil and maybe they've exploited people to get where they're at. Let's meet this man. Now let's see what he's about. Hi, 
Alex Tadla. I'm an immigrant from Poland. I moved here in 93. I got Tommy G today in my house interviewing me and I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> if you looked us up, you saw videos of us with gangsters holding and you're probably like, how do I fit into this picture? You know which one I like the most? The one that you did with the swing cars. You like the car feet? Holy <laughs> <laughs> Like, I like the one. The one with the Miami, it's like, this is, this is like a regular cheese. Mm -hmm. So like, to me, it was like, okay, so I wasn't impressed because I know that. Like this bubble, I know. I don't know the other bubble. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people in their head, when they picture a very wealthy man, they picture a person that like, floats on air. I the same way you do and everybody else everything is the same it's funny i always tell my kids it's like it doesn't matter how much money you have just think of that it's like like you do he pees like you do he gets sick like you do he brushes the teeth like you do everybody is the same way despite yark's humility i want to draw attention to the fact that meeting a billionaire is like meeting a mythical creature there's simply not many of them with only 813 of them in the united states and 2800 worldwide they are super super rare i mean you're twice as likely to bump into an nfl player and four times as likely to bump into a navy seal on the street than you are a billionaire this is an elite person now to grasp the sheer scale of what a billionaire looks like imagine this take some Someone making that he probably got he probably got so many like connections average annual american income of sixty nine thousand dollars if they saved every penny no taxes no expenses it would take them roughly fourteen thousand five hundred years to reach a billion dollars now to put that in perspective they would have had to start clocking in at the time that humans were still painting on cave walls another way to picture it is this if you stacked a billion single dollar bills up to the sky it would go up 67 miles high that's insane some people say it's better to be wealthy and anonymous than it is to be famous and poor. But right now, you're entering the public sphere. You have a book, you're gonna be on all these different Damn. shows and podcasts. Why leave the uh, the shadow, so to speak, and come out into the, the light? Because I almost come to the side two years ago. The outer wealth, it doesn't give you happiness. It fuck you up. I just hit bottom of the bottom, I had depression. I went through divorce like five years ago. It's the word is from the inside out, not from outside in. And if you don't understand the game, then you're pretty much screwed. <laughs> Yeah, drop me to just sit here and watch the dogs. That's a nice garage. Out of the car like a rapper. Like this is this is what I would expect, like, you know, key lock or oh, a marble floor garage. Oh my god, I still sh and and wash my feet the same way everybody else. <laughs> we're having to get proof. We're having yeah. to get <laughs> No, we're not having to get We were around here about two AM two nights ago with some guys with face tattoos and um, some of Kodak Black's uh, cousins and mm -hmm. street associates. It's interesting to me that five or 10 minutes down the road, you can go from Section 8 housing, people hustling, selling who knows what out of apartment to just a few couple miles away, there's Rolls Royces. Yeah, in Florida, it's like, it's a highway, like, you know, US-1. On the east side, on the water and all the canals, you know, it's the wall, and on the other side, it's like, you know, it's... But you know what, I moved here in 2010. It took me like two years to get used to it. I told me nobody get here impressed by cars, or jets, or yachts. It's like, you know, legit, but you know what I mean? What, what cars do you like? Bugattis and stuff. Yeah. I also like Porsche a lot. What kind of staff do you got? Housekeeper, I have a guy that takes care of my boats, my, you know, everything outside and all this stuff, and pretty much. Do you have a shack? Nope. nope. Do you have a toilet seat warmer that's in the toilet before you go on it so it's dude, really warm? Dude, dude, when you're gonna see my, my, my bathroom, <laughs> you're gonna... You, this is the most exciting thing about my house. You do have a butt cheek warmer on your yes. toilet? Yes. <laughs> do you have a bidet? Yes. Where you have your... Freaky, he got a bidet. Shop an ice cream cone on vacation? No ice cream? I don't eat sugar. No sugar. I don't drink. I don't. Do I don't. I don't. No. I, oh, nah. Tripping. I don't know. A lot of successful people are addicts. So when we do something, we do 120 percent. The same thing with bad habits. And I remember getting drunk with my uh, with my best friend, and I said like, I'm never gonna touch alcohol again. He said that's gonna last six months. And then six months, and then a year, two years, and like it's been now three and a half years. Is that a security guard with the vest up there? Yeah. Where is this? Uh, military academy? No! <laughs> he doesn't have a rifle on him, does he? Yes, he, he does. does. He does? Yes. He My does. old school had 20 of those. Mm -hmm. Alright, guys, study hard, have fun, make memories, oh, alright? Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye.
guarantee you that's a rich private school too. So you clearly see I'm the view, man, right? Yeah. I like the view. Oh, oh but seriously, like, look at this shit, look at my... <laughs> It does all you could do. <laughs> Dude! <laughs> Have you ever been in danger of getting hemorrhoids because you're enjoying the view so much? Yes. <laughs> Is this glass tinted? So you could be naked in here. Yeah. Triple shower head. I got sound free, all the stuff. Like, this is another way, best position. This is a lot of sh Like, I did long shower, all my routines, all my meditations happen here, steam shower this. Just the sound system, just here, is too and felt good. So, my my window is in the shower. A soundproof shower? So, I spent like 40, 40 to 50 minutes in a, you know what I mean? And 40 or 50 fall. minutes in yeah. the shower? Yeah. I, I do a lot of in my, you know what I mean? Do you have any trouble with your water bill or you can afford no, that? No, no, stop. <laughs> Would you say the average billionaire takes good care of their body? Yes. There's not a lot of slobs that are... No, really there are, there are. But it's, you need strength. I mean, you, you, you need to be physically and mentally. I mean, they're all over mentally strong. Like, all, all the people that I know very successful, very wealthy, they have enormously, like, mentally strong. <laughs> Dude, I built like, you know, neighborhood around my school because my teacher told me I'm never gonna accomplish anything. What made your teachers? Damn. Because they're teachers. So that's why I don't like schools. The school system is so broken because what happens is whatever they told, they program a software. And then I have to, it took me years and everybody else, it took us years to prove the world that that's not true. But you know, it's like, it's funny. I always want to leave, you know, my kids legacy. But the only thing I was gonna leave my kids was inheritance. Inheritance is all the stuff. But legacy is all the knowledge, all the wisdom. But I didn't know anything. My, my wealth is not transferred to my kids until they're 35, 40, 50. You know, my trust is written. So, you know, because, you know, even when they're 30, you f dumb as f I mean, I was dumb as f when I was 33. I thought I'm on the top of the world. I thought I know everything. Now I'm 52, I'm still dumb as f I still don't know anything. I'm still learning, you know, I'm 52? reading and all this stuff. Damn. Like, one sentence changed my world. You know, I was sitting, I was in Denver, Colorado. It was exactly 30, 30 years ago. Somebody said, hey, we live in a fourplex and we rent the other three units. That's it. And that changed my life. That was your first piece that of was, property? No, that, that was the conversation. I went home with my, with my girlfriend and I'm like, oh, we're moving to Colorado. We're buying uh, uh, four units. We're saving all the money, we're buying four units. And that's it. Yeah. I don't want to look like a peasant. What do I do with the spoon? Mix it. Okay. Stop, man. <laughs> Let's go to my mooncake. That those are good. Those are like uh frappuccinos or cappuccinos, whatever the f is called. They're mad like gooey. I moved here when I was twenty one. Okay. So you live in Poland from birth to yeah, twenty one. To twenty one. Okay, so what was it like growing up in a communist country? You, you know it's like the, like we were talking about the stores. It's like people have money but there's nothing you could buy. So what happened is we have like a, like everybody had access to let's say limited type of bread, sugar, vodka, whatever. There was no bananas, there was no 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 fruits, nothing like that. I moved here, I was like shit, I go to the store, it's like what? Banana chocolate, like all this stuff. Like you were going to the store, you were waiting in line to get a little bit. And it was like all the shelves in the stores were always empty. The information is limited. In in this country I learned about you know an entrepreneur because no, everybody has money, but what happened was exchange of the services. So that's why the money didn't exist. And that's what is in reality right now either. It's an exchange of services that we do at the value we bring to the table. So what would you tell young people that want to try communism in America? Go well, on, move to China or go to, you know, still go to Cuba. Go, go to communist country and follow them and see and talk to those people how they work. This is my everyday mantra. Not today, mother. Okay, so when the devil comes into my head and starts telling me why well, you don't need to do this, you do this, you f***ing lazy f blah, 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 it's like, you know, you know, today is the day you don't have to. Uh, today, motherfucker, not today. We're not doing this. How are you doing? Are you doing? Are you are you are you Tommy? Tommy? Oh, nice to meet you, Tommy. So, you're here, like, year and a half ago, right? I'm sitting, getting ready to f***ing for the workout. I'm eating my f***ing ice cream. Before a workout? Yes. So this motherfucker comes in and it's like, Puppy, what are you f***ing doing? I'm like, eating my ice cream. I'm like, okay, it's my cheat day. He said cheat day, and this motherfucker comes in and goes like, listen, we don't cheat. <laughs> we don't cheat, baby. I did not have a cheat day in f***ing 20 years. <laughs>
to be, wow, I will live till I'm 120, minimum. There's 120. 120, yeah. Like, you know, it's like, well, if I have an accident and something happened, I have no choice, right? But so right now you're 52. 52, I'm young, I was just born. Do you think you're gonna live to 120? 120, yeah. That's why I go minimum 120. How do you think you're gonna make that happen? Longevity. Just, you know, take care of my body, mentally, emotionally, mostly physically. The, the right diet, eating everything right, and just, it's just daily routines on a daily basis. And you got a secret. Yeah, I'm looking hard at it. I love looking at men with their shirt off. Sauce, me, and yeah, and then, Tommy G's in perfect shape. That's a secret sauce. You, you think living to 120 is possible? Human body is capable of a lot of things that we can't even fathom, right? And I think your mindset is everything. Your mindset could, could push you to limits beyond your imagination. Man, the United States needs some help because when you look around and see how many people are fat and unhappy in the richest country in the world. Oh, got an AI it's video. It's kind of mind blowing. Just with all the poison that's in our food. And uh, Tell like, me, I remember just... seeing this like in, during COVID. Everyone would be home, but you go walk, drive by a fast food restaurant. Lines around the corner, I'm just like I mean, I just came back from Europe, right? Mm -hmm. You put cheese on ham in refrigerated Europe. Two days later, they have a, a mold. They, they literally walk out of the refrigerator. They're old. The bread is fresh one f***ing day. Here, you put a bread, a month later, you can eat it. The ham and the cheese stay in the refrigerator for a month. We put in in our f***ing body. Don't. So you don't play with demons in your head? You don't have a A really good wrestling coach said, talk to yourself, but don't listen to yourself. So, because when you're warming up before a match, all of a sudden, my legs are weak, I, I'm kind of hungry, or, you know, maybe I need to take when you just listen to yourself, all those voices creep in like that you're not good enough, that you're not ready. But if you talk to yourself like, yeah, I got the pace. I'm gonna put, the, I'm gonna put this guy in a pace. I'm gonna put a pace on him and make some break. And I'm pacing and I'm talking to myself. That helps keep the demons at bay. True. That's a good one. Can you sit out there? That's a good one. That's a good one. We have a call in 10 minutes, in five minutes, four minutes. You're gonna jump out the TV, the, the thing. Okay. In office. You can jump out of the call in three minutes? Yeah, we have the, uh, the inner shipping call. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yarek is walking into his office to jump on his weekly call with The Edge, a group of high net worth men that meet to talk about their the goals, edge. struggles, and give advice to each other. Right? I mean, we, get, we need to recess because if we go 100 miles an hour, if we don't reset, it's like that's we're going to crash. And I got to tell you, like, I keep talking about it, the demons, the demons are in, our, in my head all the time that it's like, you know, it's a gift and a curse because that's what we never stop. You know what I mean? You got to see that do say on the mother at the bar counter this said he ain't drinking three years that mean that do say old as oh like like and, and truly give it all take the money <laughs> like you pray for something and then god gives it to you and then you get depressed are, are you the same man you went three and a half years ago are you f***ing holding on from three and a half years ago you're not, you're not the same man you were three and a half years ago okay. yes mother I am fucked. I am fucked. Hey, Andy, why don't you tell the motherfucker you just bought 130 million dollars in real estate? So fuck off. Yeah, you broke. Uh, it's who you are in these times, Andrew, that will determine who you become. It's who you become that's more important. He, for, for 13 years, he he basically prayed for his kids to shut up. So that as soon as they learned to shut up, he prayed for them to start. Would I attend an edge meeting and stroke my? Yes, I would. I'd be in that. Like, all right, guys, so how are we going to learn how to be a billionaire? I'm just showing you the blueprint of what's possible. It's up to you to figure out how. As fathers, we have, it's our job to help them see that they could do it even better than us. In this grind, and we forget what is important. You know what I mean? And, and on the end of the day, none of, of our queens or, or, or our kids they don't give a f about the money. They, they just give a f about us. Next level! Oh, let's go. Exactly. Take away. Take away the goal. That yeah, no matter what level of success you reach, there's always something around the corner. There's never a stage of life where everything is just settled in and okay and no conflict, no worries. Whether it's on the business front, relationship front, you always got something that's a challenge and that's just part of being a human. You do both? 
Avocado, banana, coffee, Chilai, peanut, peanut butter, butter, almond butter, and uh, almond butter. That's what makes it look like uh, that. Chocolate cookie. Look good as right up my alley. In the evening, what I do, I do the decaf coffee. You know, so I don't drink coffee after one o'clock. For me, sleep is everything. You know? And my sleep is fucked up. Like, you know, when I wake up, like with oral, when I fucked up, my sleep is fucked up. The whole day is fucked. I want to sit down. How are you, sir? It's Tommy. Hey, Tommy. How are you, sir? Nice to meet you. Nice How to are meet you? you as well. What do you do? I am uh, sell real estate. Yeah? So houses like this. I saw in this house. Uh, multiple. <laughs> what do you like being in that market? It's my passion. I love it. It's, uh, it's, it's exciting, you know, especially down here. It's, I mean, look at this. If you're walking, it doesn't, property, doesn't, but... doesn't get much better, right? I had no idea what was about to happen. It's, I find out the sh the way you do. So it's a Forbes interview uh, oh, about the book, I'm assuming. So we'll see. You know? Can you hear us? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you all. Can you hear me? Hey, Mark. I can hear you. Okay. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And we are recording. Uh, let's start from the beginning. You're from Poland, correct? Yes. You know what? The only thing I never knew what I'm gonna do. Funny, I always knew I, you know, because I'm coming from Poland, from communist country. I always knew I never want to work for anybody. I always knew I'm gonna be, you know, entrepreneur, and I always knew that I'm gonna work for myself. When you came here, you lived in where did you live the first time in Rochester? Rochester, New York, upstate New York. And then you moved to Denver. Where did Denver, you Colorado. In I'm in I, I'm in Florida, Florida, south 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 Florida. What does it feel like having a book out there? It feels good. It's a, it, it's a, it's a step one. It's a step one. Not enoughness. Feels good, right? That's good. Yeah. He felt that. You feel that? Yeah, yeah. Like, the thing is, you have such a, um, a contagious message. Because I think everyone, nearly everyone, in some way or form, wants to be here, wants to be in this palace on the water, wants Nice. Jet, wants to have the real estate and then for you to come and say actually guys that doesn't fulfill you that doesn't nice. lead to happiness mm -hmm. it's kind of refreshing especially in Miami we see the opposite we see these guys flexing their Lamborghinis flexing their women flexing their whatever they got their Gucci shirt mm -hmm. and it's a refreshing honest authentic raw true message you know everybody want to talk about money yeah and this is like the last thing that I want to talk about you know? Can I tell you this stuff? starting to make a little bit of money now but from the outsider perspective the common man perspective the money gets people's foot in the door if you were worth 70 grand and you're starting to talk about how you wanted to up, a lot of people are in that shoes but a guy that has made what you made talks about that it's like holy I only could find people that, you know, because in this society you get, you get level of respect depending on how much money you have. And that's what is fucked up. Because the best people that can teach you and they can show you, they don't have a time to share this on social media, they don't have a time to write a book, they don't have a time to be around. Because they're busy, their fathers are working three jobs. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But because they did not accomplish anything financially, so they don't have a word. Why do you think that is? Um, well, you just said it. Because it's a or the society you, is you get to just us. based on your net yeah. worth and if you see a homeless guy on the side of the road mm -hmm. do you have him a dollar dude i yeah i did give i mean two homeless people yes but not to everybody what makes you decide when you'll give them a couple bucks i don't give to people to you know like sit on the street and just on the red lights but like when I go by the homeless people and I see like they're really struggling or like you know picking up stuff from the trash can or just ask me at the store, then I don't have a problem. You're pretty good at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so you would say you're a risk taker? Entire life. Entire life. How long have you been flying private? Two years. You just started pretty much. Yeah. It's comfort. How much demand is there for chartering a jet these days? A lot. Yeah? They pretty much charter pretty much all the time. What is it, if I wanted to rent your plane to fly from here to Chicago, how much would that run me? $28,000 one way, $30,000. And how much does one of these cost? Seven to $10 million. 
And what made you decide to get two rather than just one? Well, what happened is, like, the, the way I entered the partnership, so they own two of them. So it just like it just kind of it just came came with it. Like it just kind of happened. It, it, it just happened. It just, it just comes like that. Would you say you're frugal? I think so. Is it hard for you to spend money? You know what? It's hard for me to spend money on some things and and easy on some on, on some other things. What's so a hard purchase for you? If I can get the same value for different different amount, that's what I'm struggling with. Polish immigrant, first generation American. Your specialty in real estate was you realize, hey, if you're an immigrant, you don't speak English that well, you kind of get treated like is a tenant and there's not a lot of good options for you. So nah, you, you're listening. So you plugged the hole in the market yeah. and you provided, you catered to immigrants, right? Low income tenants and that's because that's, that, you know, they're not being taken care of. A question you gotta ask yourself when looking at a bathroom, is this a bathroom that you would take a poo in? If it is, then it's the right bathroom for your client. Thanks. When you first moved to America, what job did you have? This was it. This was it where? In Rochester, New York. Okay, how long did you do that for? I was a dishwasher for a month because I quickly went to from washing dishes to help in the kitchen and I was a busboy and also waiter. How did you save up the money to buy a fourplex? I was in, you know, uh, college. I was community college. So the community college was very cheap. And I moved back with my parents. And at that time, I also was uh, selling, buying and sell, selling cars. So mm -hmm. what happened is I was buying like a car after accident, fixing them and then selling them. I was making profit. A big thing you did is you were humble enough to move in with your parents. Yeah. When most people would say, I just want my own apartment. Mm -hmm. And you saved a lot of money there. A lot. It saved me like another, you know, $900 to $1,000 with, with everything. You gave the analogy before, like your first 10 properties is a lot harder than your next 100, yeah. right? Talk about your philosophy of momentum. Like pushing, like we talk about, like pushing a car. It's it's hard to start, but the second you have a startup, you have a going. For some reason, then even if you think about it, you sleep on it, you think you. Bre yeah, he's spitting. Next video.